All right, Mr. Musgrove Pythagoras still hanging out. We got a whole bunch more examples, 9 to 13, and then you'll be done with part one of your notes. So we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of examples here in 9 to 13. But before we do that, we got to go back and just kind of revisit the last piece because we're going to need that here, examples 7 and 8. So remember in 7 and 8, we had to use our, you know, the little kind of acronym I gave you, go LA, to figure out if it was an obtuse or an acute triangle. Right triangle, we know how to figure that out. But before you do that, remember, you got to double check to be sure that the values we're given are going to be a triangle. So with that said, that's just a little bit of review real quick. So now let's take a look at examples 9 through 13. Now you might be able to do all this stuff on your own. So if you can, booyah, good for you. What I want you to do is go ahead, do it, work everything out, then Fast forward to the end and see if all of your work matches my work exactly. All right, because you always want to make sure your work is nice, it's neat, it's organized, and it's easy for people to read what you got written down. So be neat about it, all right? So if you need to hit pause, do it on your own. Fast forward, you do that. Otherwise, here we go. Now, tell whether the triangle is given side lengths is a right triangle. So if it's going to be a right triangle, then that means c squared has to equal a squared plus b squared to be a right triangle. So with that said, what I need to do is just go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem. So my biggest side here is 8. So I'm going to have 8 squared. And what I want to do is see if that's equal. So I'm going to put a little blank right there to 4 squared plus 4 squared of 3. And I'm going to put parentheses around all that and square that. So 8 squared, 64. 4 squared is 16. Now here, 4 squared is 16 and square root of 3. When I square that, I get just 3. So 16 times 3, I end up with 48 for that piece. Now 16 plus 48, when I add those together, I get 64. Hey, check that out. 64 equals 64. Booyah! This one is a right triangle. Yay! We got one. Now, 10, 11, and 14. Now, if I add up 10 and 11, that gives that is more than 14. So I can go ahead and try this one and make sure see if this what kind of triangle this one is. So 11 and or 14 squared. I'm gonna test that and see if that's equal to 11 squared plus. 10 squared. Oops, forgot my little squared there. 14 squared, as you know, is 196, and 11 squared is 121, and 10 squared is 100. If I add up 121 and 100, that's easy to do mentally, I get 221. And 196 is definitely not equal to 100. That's actually less than 100. So, since they're not equal, no right triangle, or not a right triangle. So that's it for number 10. Now 11, same thing. Now square root of 61 is pretty close to square root of 64. If it were square root of 64, I know that would be 8. And the sum of 5 and 6 is definitely more than 8. So the sum of 5 and 6 is going to be more than the square root of 61. So I'm going to bust straight into this. So square root of 61, bang, bang, squared. i got to test that out see how that is compared to 5 squared plus 6 squared. Square root of 61 squared, 61. Now, 5 squared, 25. 6 squared is 36. If I add those two pieces together, 25 and 36, I get 61. So since that's equal to my hypotenuse squared, yo, I got another right triangle. So that's pretty cool. So there's 9, 10, and 11 for you, pretty straightforward. Now on 12, now on this one, we're going to need to bust out the calculator because we got some decimal pieces here. So make sure you get your calculator out to go ahead and do the calculations here. Now we want to know first, can they form a triangle? And then second, what kind of triangle it is? So on this one, check it, 4.3 plus 5.2. Well, 4 and 5 is 9, so that's definitely more than 6. So yes, we got a triangle. So now we got to just figure out what kind we got. So again, we'd have 6.1 squared. And then I want to compare that to 4.3, that squared, and then plus 5.2 squared. So how do you do with the rest of that one? Did you come up with that being an acute triangle? Because 37.21 is definitely less than 45.53. 
hopefully you remembered less than, is a Q. LA, remember that baby from last part? That's right, because you're going to LA. All right, so with that said, here we go with the next one. Now this one's for 13. This one says show the segments with three, four, and six can form a triangle. So we gotta show that. So we're gonna use that triangle inequality theorem. So let's see, three plus four, if we add those two up, and compare that to six, so seven is greater than six. So we just showed that the side lengths of three, four, and six, because seven is greater than six, we do have a triangle. So yay, we got one. Now we gotta just figure out what kind of triangle this thing is. So bust it out. You guys can do this on your own by now. So go ahead and hit pause, come back, and let's see what we got. So how'd you guys do with this one? Did you get 36 grade and 25? Remember, grade or obtuse, go, go. Go up to say that a few times to yourself to make sure that you got it, but you got to set it up in this order. The hypotenuse has got to be on the left side, and then the legs being squared, each of those have to be on the right side. So that's it for this piece. Now, that is the end of all these examples here for this first section of our notes on, on the Pythagorean theorem. In our textbook, it's section 7 1 and 7 2. So we're going to wrap that up with this piece. Now, just one more thing before you go. If this were a quiz or a test, this is exactly how Muscarella would be grading you guys. First thing, I'd want to see this. So you'd get one point for that line. And then making sure that you square everything correctly, you'd get another point for that line. And then showing, you know, coming up with that sum of 25 and writing that, you get a point for that. And then the last piece would be a point right there. So just kind of thinking ahead about how I'm going to assess you guys, you get a point for each one of those pieces. Now, if it says show that the segments would and it actually has that in there, then you would get another point for this piece over here using that triangle inequality theorem. So that's how you're going to be assessed by me anyway as a teacher when, uh, when you're working on this type of problem. So make sure that you show that work just like that and you'll be busting out and achieving maximum points on this problem. All right, man, you guys, thanks for watching. Peace. I'll catch up with you later.